batteries. A typical electrochemical cell battery is in ordinary language consists of two electrodes which are often metals immersed in an electrolyte solution. The materials are chosen so that ions from one of the electrodes are readily soluble in the electrolyte. But when the cell is not connected to anything that process of solution is balanced by a separation of electric charge across the electrode. Electrolyte boundary which pulls ions from solution back onto the electrode. At the other electrode there is a similar equilibrium with the opposite charge separation giving a balance between ions being deposited on the electrode and dissolved. This gives oppositely charged electrodes with a potential difference between them. When an external conducting part between the two electrodes is connected, it can supply electrons to one electrode and extract them from the other, destroying the previous equilibria at the electrodes and providing a current in the external circuit. The chemical processes of solution and deposition at the electrodes can proceed and will continue to maintain a potential difference between the electrodes until the chemicals are exhausted. Energy supplied to the external circuit comes at the expense of the energy of the system of electrodes and electrolytes, AA. Batteries are common in portable electronic devices. AA battery is composed of a single electrochemical cell. The exact terminal voltage and capacity of an AA size battery depend on cell chemistry. However, devices designed for AA will usually only take 1.5 volt unless specified by the manufacturer. AA battery uses a paste electrolyte which only enough moisture to allow current to flow. This allows it to operate in any orientation without spilling as it contains no free liquid making it suitable for portable equipment. AA battery comprises a zinc anode usually in the form of a cylindrical pot with a carbon cathode in the form of a central rod. The electrolyte is ammonium chloride in the form of a paste next to the zinc anode. The person responsible for naming positive and negative charge was Benjamin Franklin who did not know that the charge carriers in a metal are really negatively charged electrons. So we are stuck with the notion of conventional current which we imagine to be a flow of positive charge out of a battery's positive terminal through a conducting path and into its negative terminal. Some people like to be more realistic and imagine the actual flow of electrons in the opposite direction provided Either convention is kept constant in calculating variables in a circuit, you will obtain correct answer. The battery provides an electrical potential difference which causes a current to flow. When you switch on a battery powered radio, you are using electrical energy. You can often find the rate of energy consumption written on the back of the radio as so many watts. This rate at which the radio uses energy is called power P and it depends on both the voltage V supplied by the battery and the total current I from the battery through the relation P equals VI. If the power consumption is constant then the energy E used in a time interval delta T is given by E equals P delta T. Similar relations hold for appliances which run on main electricity which supplies an alternative current AC. Although the AC voltage and current vary very rapidly, the average voltage, average current and average power consumption are still connected via the relation P equals VI. A radio uses electrical energy to produce sound and quite a lot of thermal energy which leaves the radio as heat. As far as energy consumption goes, we can treat most appliances like radios and toasters as pure resistors. You can work out the effective resistance of an appliance by using the relation that voltage equals current into resistance. 
V equals IR. From this relation, you can see that for a given voltage, the more resistance you have, the less the current will be, which seems very sensible. A resistor is like a fatty deposit in an artery, slowing down the flow of blood or speed humps, slowing down the flow of traffic. When you have resistors in parallel, their total resistance is less because it's like having two lanes instead of one. So more traffic can flow. When you have two parallel electrical paths, the electrons can flow down two paths. So you get more current even though there are more resistors. Electrons in metals. Electrical conductivity in metals is a result of the movement of electrically charged particles. The atoms of metal elements are characterized by the presence of valence electrons, which are electrons in the outer shell of an atom that are free to move about. It is these free electrons that allow metal to conduct an electric current. Because valence electrons are free to move, they can travel through the lattice that forms the physical structure of a metal. We discussed about current electricity and concepts like current, potential difference and resistance. We will discuss about electrical circuits in the next section.